Hi, this is Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to begin working on my Simplicity 4040 PowerMax tractor project. Now, I'm not going to call this a tractor restoration. All I'm going to do with this particular project is fix the issues with it, repaint it, and put this tractor right to work. So here's a list of the issues with this tractor that need to be fixed. The charging system doesn't work. The air filter housing is missing. The rear PTO doesn't work. The throttle and choke cables don't work. The transmission control lever is missing a little detent ball. The rear tires need to be replaced. There's a puncture in the sidewall of one of the rear tires. The hood needs to be fixed. It was cut out to uh, fit an alternator as well as there was a hole cut out on the side of the hood to accommodate an exhaust. Those both need to be corrected. The seat is missing. The muffler needs to be replaced, and the fuel lines need to be replaced. The hour meter on this tractor only reads 369 hours. I'm not 100% sure how accurate this might be. I'm going to have to test the hour meter uh, later on to make sure that it was still working. But if this were true, 369 hours, that means this tractor is just a baby. Uh, the engine does run really, really sweet, as you can hear here. Okay, let's start on this tractor project. Here I am removing the bottom skid plate that's on the bottom of the tractor. And as you can see, there is a ton of old mice nests as well as debris from uh, mowing lawns all built up in here. It's important to, to take all this down, clean it all up, and kind of see what you're working with. This stuff can hold a lot of moisture, which can rot and rust away your tractor frame. Here's the top tunnel cover that is in between your legs when you're sitting on the tractor. This shaft that you see right here, that's the PTO shaft. I suspect there's an issue with that PTO shaft and that is why the rear PTO is not working. It, this uh, shaft here is connected from the engine to this electric clutch that's in the back of the transmission. In order to get the skid plate dropped all the way down, I have to get the mower deck drive belt out of the way. It was temporarily put up on the mower deck lift mechanism just to keep it off the ground. As you can see by the skid plate that just fell, there is a ton of old residue from an old mouse nest left behind, a lot of mouse poop. Uh, we gotta get all that cleaned off. In the center of that skid plate is the old regulator rectifier. Here's some more mouse nesting throughout different parts of the tractor. This is just forward of the transmission. And this is all underneath the tractor. This is what happens when equipment just kinda sits outside for, uh, for a number of years. So this PTO shaft right here, this should always turn when the engine is turning. I had already tested this. I started the engine, uh, and this shaft does not turn. So what I think the problem is is this shaft has come uncoupled from the engine. Let's pull the engine and see, see what's going on. Before I get to the engine, I first have to get the oil cooler and the fuel tank out of the way. To do that, you just undo the bolts holding the cooler in, you kind of bend it, you kind of gently fold it back, get it out of the way, and then you can just uh, wiggle the gas tank off after you remove the gas tank straps. I had to cut the lines just to make it easier. The, the fuel lines had to be replaced anyways. Once that's out of the way, you can kind of see the connection where the front of that PTO shaft meets the rear of the engine. That orange looking piece you see, that's like a dust and dirt cover for a chain coupler. A chain coupler is where two hubs that sit around shafts, they come together and they're held together with a roller chain. That's what's underneath that orange piece. I'm gonna remove that orange piece so you can see it. And then that coupler, the chain coupler is, is hooked onto a keyed shaft for the PTO shaft and then it's connected to the engine with two bolts. And you can kind of see the two bolts just to the right of that orange cover. Let's get this orange cover off, and I'll show you what the rest of it looks like. So there is the chain coupler. You can see that. To remove this, you can just remove the master links of the chain, and then after you take that off, the two uh, couplings will be apart, and then you can pull the engine from there. 
Let's uh, remove that, remove the battery, remove the electrical components, and get this engine out of the tractor. There it is, the Onan CCK 16 horsepower engine that came out of this Simplicity 4040. I didn't park the tractor underneath one of my engine lift points, so I couldn't use my engine hoist to get it out this time, but I had Nancy, our office manager, come out and help me take this engine out. It was a heavy engine, but we got it out just fine. Here's a closer look at the chain coupler from the engine. Let's go take a look at that PTO shaft. So here is the front of the PTO shaft where it connects to the chain coupler and then connects to the engine. Uh, it looks like that the previous owner had trouble with this keyway before. That's why they put that little hose clamp behind it. It probably fell out at some point. But uh, this time, it eventually just sheared right off and it looks like it damaged the shaft too. So I'm going to have to take the shaft to a local machine shop, have them uh, weld it back into shape, and then cut a new keyway, and then I'll have a good working rear PTO again. So let's talk about both the broken choke as well as the air filter housing that's missing for this tractor. As of right now, the previous owner, they had this uh, Harley-Davidson air filter that's uh, put over the carburetor with uh, a series of like hoses to help reduce the diameter. Since the choke isn't working, in order to choke the engine, you have to take the filter off, put your hand over the carburetor, start the engine, and then put this air filter back. Uh, I obviously don't like this because when you use your hand to choke the engine and the engine starts, when you remove your hand to put the air filter on, there's that gap of time where dust and dirt can be ingested by your engine. So I want to make it so the choke works again and we don't have to use this uh, kind of goofy Harley-Davidson air filter. So here is my solution. I'm going to make a custom intake using this one and a half inch di inner diameter intake hose as well as a universal fit K&N air filter. Uh, I'm going to cut this to the shape and size that I need. I'm going to mount it to the carburetor itself and then I'm going to make a little coupler out of PVC pipe and my bench lathe and I'm going to couple the air filter to this intake hose and that should solve that problem. So to assemble my custom intake, I'm going to attach this intake hose directly to the mouth of the carburetor. I'm going to use this hose clamp to tighten it down and secure it to the carburetor itself. And then after that, I'm going to be clamping the PVC pipe coupler that I made. All I did was take a piece of uh, PVC pipe, it's a, it's a fitting and then I just turned it down slightly on the lathe so it fits perfectly into the K&N air filter and into the intake hose itself. Now I'm going to secure the coupler to the intake hose with another hose clamp. And when I'm finished with that, the last step is to add the K&N air filter oil 
to the air filter. Hey, that's all the time we have in this first episode of this Simplicity 4040 Power Max Tractor Project. Please look us up online at isavetractors.com. We are the premier aftermarket developers for brand new parts for vintage and antique small engines like the old cast iron Kohler engines, Briggs & Stratton, Tecumseh, Wisconsin, and Onan engines. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.